Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. I have a message to you, my sisters, those of you who follow this channel, about the current situation that is unfolding in the world with a pandemic. The reason why I'm addressing this is not to speak about the various theories about what is happening or what isn't happening, but instead to talk to you about something that I observe to be an intention behind this particular issue. So this temptation is, of course, to, to fall into doing research on the internet and seeking to have the wisdom of men about what's happening in order to preserve one's life in this world. So a Christian who loves Jesus Christ, when they're given extra time, when they have been forbidden to go to work, they've been forbidden to leave their home for the most part, they would want to take the opportunity to spend more time with God in his word asking him questions, seeking him in prayer, and get, getting a deeper understanding of the things of God. But what is happening with many of you who are young in the faith, who communicate with me, is that the, the dramatic effect of this event is drawing you into the internet to, to try to figure out what is happening. So this isn't something that we as Christians want to do. Let's begin today in Psalm 37. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Psalm 37. And let's read here, starting in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is co coming. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your beautiful word. No matter what is happening, no matter what is happening, God is sitting in his heaven. He is sitting on his throne. And the devices of wicked men will be brought to naught. We are who are in the faith of Jesus Christ. We don't need to understand all the ins and outs of what the enemy is up to. You see, let's go to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, and let's read here verse 19. This is a letter. The book of Romans is an epistle or a letter written to Christians by the Apostle Paul. So a Christian is someone who has obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not someone who believes in the Trinity and thinks that salvation comes by faith alone. It's not someone who thinks that a sinner's prayer saved them. A Christian understands what the Word of God says, 
first of all, about who God is and who his son is, who the only begotten son of God is. They understand that. They understand that they're a hopeless sinner in need of salvation, and they obey the gospel by repenting, turning away from their sins, and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, not as the outward sign of an inward change or as a public profession of their faith. A Christian is someone who's obeyed the gospel. Let's read now, starting in verse 19. For your obedience, so obedience unto the gospel, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But, but, so there's something more after obeying the gospel. But, Yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. There's a tendency on the part of people because of the way the internet was made to fall into the snare of spending the majority of one's time doing research on the internet, watching videos in particular. The, the video format is particularly enticing to the human mind. We can get information, we think, through our eyes, but we're not reading. We're getting understanding, but it's not our own understanding. It's being inserted directly into our brain through a video. And yes, I'm making a video for you, but I'm also reading the Word of God for you. And one way that we know the truth is by hearing or reading the Word of God. So this video is not here to draw views. It's not to make money. I don't make money on YouTube. It's to speak the truth of God's Word on YouTube so that God's people will, for the most part, depart from YouTube. And this includes other video formats and sites such as Brighteon or DLive. You see, a Christian doesn't need to figure out what the enemy is up to in order to inherit everlasting life. And this is a pitfall that I'm seeing happening with a lot of you who are young in the faith. As you can see, this video is titled, Here Comes the Borg. And the point of it is that no matter what is happening in the world, we want to take heed to ourselves. We want to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We don't want to fall into the snares of the enemy. And right now, the biggest snare that I see is that our people are allowing themselves to be consumed by the Borg by spending all their time watching videos. So if we go now, pardon me, to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's begin here in verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So I'm going to read this again. I really want people to hear what the Word of God says here that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let's read on. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered in to the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by Google, by YouTube, by Brighteon, 
by internet research? No. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So if you want to know something, where do you go? as a Christian. You go to Almighty God, the one who formed heaven and earth, the one who was in his Son, the one who provided a way for you to depart from iniquity, live in holiness, and serve him unto everlasting life. That's the one that you seek when you want to know what's going on with the pandemic or with 5G. You don't go to the snake, to hear what the snake wants to tell you. You don't spend all your time roaming around in the snake's territory. A Christian abides in the word of God, and if we don't do so, we become withered and worn and frightened and confused. So, let's read on here. Let's start in verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. What? He that is spiritual judgeth all things. Here the word judge is being used in the way that it's intended, meaning we discern. We discern between what is good and evil. We can tell the difference between what is right and wrong. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. My sisters, if you have the mind of Christ, you do not need to figure out what the enemy is up to. You don't have to figure out whether what's killing people is a virus or whether it's 5G or whether it's something else. You don't need to worry about that. Because if you're a Christian abiding in the word of God and serving Jesus Christ every day by walking in holiness, doing his commandments, speaking the truth of the gospel unto people, then you have nothing to fear. Your life is hid with Christ. You are in him. And therefore, if you're living in that manner, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So you don't have to worry about what that weapon is. You instead concern yourself with the things that are eternal, the invisible things, the things that the people in this world think are foolish. You see, there's one reason and one reason only why a Christian is on the earth, and that is to be an ambassador for Christ, to speak the truth of the gospel unto the world so that other people can see the kingdom of God and those that see it will enter into it by obeying the gospel. And this is foolishness with men. What I would say about what's happening right now with the pandemic is people have been told not to go out, to stay home. And this is kind of a, a choice then that we have. We can spend all of our time on the internet, which is easy, 
doing research and entertaining ourselves, really, with the wicked devices that are happening in the world. Or we can take the opportunity to delve into the fountain of living waters and be filled with the spirit of the living God. And when we do that, we will know the truth. It will be very easy for us to distinguish between what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, what is evil, what is good. So a Christian who's abiding in the, the fountain of life, which is Jesus Christ, those who are abiding in him and his word are not going to take the mark of the beast. And they don't need to concern themselves with, well, is it going to be in the vaccine? We don't need to worry about that because if we're abiding in Jesus Christ, we are marked by him. We have the circumcision made without hands. We have the law of God written on our heart and we're not going to be deceived. However, if having been saved from our sins, we turn back, we turn back to trying to figure out from the intelligence and wisdom of men, what is happening, that what will happen is over time, we will start to become fearful. We will start to become suspicious. And what will then proceed out of our mouth will be what we've been eating. So I've said this before, and I'm going to repeat it again today. What will come out of your mouth is what you put into your heart. We are what we eat, both on the physical plain and on the spiritual realm. So a Christian who's eating God's word every single day is going to speak God's word. They're going to manifest the love of Jesus Christ in their face, and they are not going to be fearful. They are not going to be worried about whatever the enemy is doing. However, a Christian who goes back to junk food and, and religious uh, fear porn on the internet. So various prophecy interpretations or, or people's rapture dreams or people's uh, opinions about what's going to happen next and what Christians need to do. This kind of end times religious fear porn that comes forth from Trinitarians and people who don't know God or the way of salvation. They have no idea who Jesus Christ is. They're serving pagan gods and they don't know it. They think that they're a Christian, even though they're yet walking in their iniquity because they were lied to and they believe that saying a sinner's prayer will save you. These people who are on the internet, who have very, a w very wide reach, they're very popular because most people are in the false church. You see? So these kinds of sites and, and videos are very popular because they represent a very dramatic view of prophecy. And they'll say something like, what God has in store next and building the kingdom and the mark of the beast. And, but they don't know God. So who are they to be telling a Christian who does know God about prophecy? So the Borg briefly. The Borg is the system of technology that is being built right now. The purpose of 5G is to create a system whereby all human transactions will happen under the supervision of AI. That includes banking, buying and selling, trading. It includes relationships. It includes what you speak. It includes what you do, everything you do. So if you're doing something that the Borg doesn't like, such as talking to someone from three feet away instead of six feet away, then the Borg will know that and the Borg is going to punish you. It's Satan's imitation of the omnipresence and omniscience of God. When we see this happening, the system of technocracy, of a global communist dictatorship that is enforced through technology, when we see this happening, we realize what it wants is for us to be assimilated into it. That's the whole point of the mark of the beast. The point 
of the mark of the beast is to get you, a human being, to leave your first estate and to assimilate yourself into technology in some way by taking it into your flesh or assimilating your mind into the internet, downloading your consciousness, as it were, upgrading your consciousness, giving yourself everlasting life by merging with the machine. That's what the Borg wants. And right now, the step that the Borg is taking to get people to accept that is to isolate them, make them have a lot of time so that they will become used to and addicted to seeking things that are unprofitable and vain on the internet. Internet addiction is very, very serious in these times. When we see something through our eyes on the internet, we can't tell the difference. But the human mind is made in such a way so that when things come through the eye, they're real unto us. So if I'm watching a, 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 a drama on YouTube about some religious person's interpretation of what is killing people right now, that gets into my mind as if I were seeing it for myself. One thing that I noticed lately is that people tend to believe about this event, what they're watching. So if they're watching videos about how this is a deadly virus, then that's what they believe. And they get very well defended about that. Or if they believe that it's not a virus, it's actually 5G, the same thing occurs. Or if they think that, you know, whatever they're thinking, it usually is centered around what they're watching. And the way the internet is formulated, it's to feed you more of the same thing. So it will tell you more of the same thing to confirm the beliefs that are formulating in your mind. Therefore, when we're watching the internet, we need to recognize that it's there to control what we think. It's there to control what we perceive and get us to become involved in being addicted to it, being linked to it. So we're watching it all the time. We think it's critically important. It's sometimes the first thing we do when we awaken in the morning, or it's the last thing we do before we go to bed at night. It's what we're thinking about all the time. And Satan wants that. The Borg wants that because then it's going to be very easy to get you to accept whatever's next. But a Christian doesn't abide in the Borg. A Christian abides in God's word. And truth is found in scripture. Finally, what the point I want to make right now is that if you're listening to someone and they're telling you something and it becomes apparent, and they're telling you something about prophecy. They're telling you about Revelation 13. And then it becomes apparent to you that they're leading people through a sinner's prayer because they think that they understand prophecy. And of course, they're presenting this dramatic view of prophecy unto people to get them to say a sinner's prayer because they believe that's what saves people. That when you as a Christian see that, what you should do is depart from listening to that person because they don't understand God's word. They can't. They're blind. They don't know God. They don't know the way of salvation. And what they're doing is trying to help someone with salvation when they're yet on the broad path that leads to destruction themselves. And a Christian wouldn't want to be partaking of that. They need what we have. Well, what we have is not popular. It's not profitable in terms of money. It's not the kind of thing that's enticing to the eye or to the ear. Still, what we have is the simplicity that is in Jesus Christ. I would have you wise my sisters, concerning that which is good and simple concerning evil. I pray this message has been a blessing to you. 
Feel free to email me or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.